Today, we are talking about antibiotics. They're life-saving and they're absolutely necessary, but at the same time, they cause absolute havoc. They're harmful to your body and they're often unnecessary. Yes, at the same time. And many of you listening will say, you know, I really don't like antibiotics. I try not to take antibiotics. And you're not wrong, but you're also not right. Antibiotics have saved millions of lives. Trust me, we do not want to go back to the days before antibiotics. But the problem is that we overuse them and we use them wrong. And this has created a crisis in our body and in our world. Every year, prescribers prescribe millions of antibiotics, but up to 43% of these prescriptions are unnecessary. And that's just taking into account the countries that prescribe antibiotics. There are plenty of countries where you can get antibiotics over the counter, and that makes up even more of unnecessary use. So today we're going to talk about antibiotics, what they are, when we need them, and why they can be harmful. Before I do that, I always like to let you know how to reach me and my team. Wherever you are, if you type the word change, then that will let us know that you want the show notes and we'll send that over to you. I like to see things written out as well. If you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe because it makes us feel happy. And if you're listening on the podcast, of course, it's the same background, always wearing the stethoscope my wife gave me and my hair is always on point. So continue washing your dishes or mowing your lawn because you're in the right place. And wherever you are, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at the new method, new spelled with a K, because we're funny. And if you like this topic, share it with the people that you love. Let them become the game changers in their life. For those of you who don't know me, I don't know why you're watching if you don't know me, but welcome anyway. My name is Efrat Lamandre. Everyone calls me Dr. E, and I invented the new method where we empower people to realize that their symptoms are not in their head because you always knew there was a better way. So let's jump in now. So let's first start with a definition. What is an antibiotic? Antibiotics are medicines that fight bacterial infection in people and animals. They work by killing bacteria or making it hard for bacteria to grow and multiply. Now notice I said bacterial infections, not viral infections. We'll get into that in a moment, but keep it there. Antibiotics have been used for thousands of years to treat infections, even during a time when they didn't even realize what they were doing. They didn't even know infections were caused by bacteria, but they were working anyway because we have proof. Ancient Egyptians were using various molds and plant extracts to treat infections. By some of the earliest civilizations, they applied moldy bread to infected wounds. They didn't know why it worked, but it worked. We figured out later why it worked. But even with that, even with that early exposure, until the 20th century, infections that we now consider so straightforward, such as pneumonia, diarrhea that's caused by bacteria, used to be the number one cause of human death in the developed world. Until antibiotics were discovered, we died of things that we never considered deadly, like a strep throat. So let's do a little history lesson of why antibiotics are amazing and then how we got to where they're not so amazing. So I always find the story, you might know it, but I find the story really funny because penicillin was discovered by accident. This gentleman named Alexander Fleming, he went on vacation and he randomly had some fungus, penicillin notatum, just hanging out on his counter. And he randomly had a culture plate of Staphylococcus bacteria because who doesn't leave that on their counter any day, let alone when they go on vacation. Anyway, goes on vacation, comes back, and some of the fungus goes into the bacteria plate and he looks at the bacteria plate and there's now bacteria free zones. So he realized that this mold was killing the bacteria. And that is how penicillin was born. Pretty much an accident. The discovery of penicillin in 1928 started what's called the golden age of natural product antibiotic discovery, meaning they found things in nature that created antibiotics. And in the beginning, penicillin was super successful. The US government began to create mass production. And by 1944, penicillin was used all over the world, especially in our troops in Europe. At the end of World War II, penicillin was nicknamed the wonder drug because remember, certain infections that people used to die from, now they were living from. So antibiotics saved millions of lives. Before antibiotics, 90% of children with bacterial meningitis died. Strep throat was a fatal disease. Ear infections would sometimes spread to the brain, causing severe problems. Other serious infections from tuberculosis to pneumonia to whooping cough caused by a bacteria that reproduced quickly and led to death. Then there was no way out. And in addition to treating infections, antibiotics made certain procedures possible, certain surgeries, cancer treatments, organ transplants, open heart surgeries, things you can never perform because of the risk of infection. Prior to antibiotics, infectious disease was the main reason people got sick and died. The average life expectancy before antibiotics was 47 years old. 
in just 100 years, antibiotics have drastically changed modern medicine and extended human lifespan by 23 years. So it really is amazing and life-saving. But you know there has to be a but, there is a cost. First is something called the superbug. And the superbug is what we call a bacteria that becomes antimicrobial resistant. Some bacteria have become totally resistant to the antibiotics that we have. They're called superbugs. There are infections right now in this world that are completely untreatable by any antibiotics. It's been predicted that 10 million people a year will die from a drug-resistant infection by 2050. Antibiotic resistance or superbugs occur when bacteria that you're trying to treat, you're treating it, you give it the antibiotics, and that bacteria is a living thing. So it changes in response to the medicine. I just want to point out that it's bacteria, not humans, that become antibiotic resistant. Because a lot of you say, oh, I can't take any antibiotics. It doesn't work on me. It's not you. It's the bacteria that lives inside of you. These bacteria that are now resistant can then infect another human or an animal, and those infections are deadly because we don't have any medications to treat them. And these superbugs are spreading globally. There's a growing list of infections, such as pneumonia, tuberculosis, gonorrhea, foodborne diseases, and they're becoming harder, sometimes impossible to treat. The reason superbugs happen is because we use antibiotics too often and not correctly. Let me explain. So sometimes it's the PCP's fault. You know, some PCPs out there are just really quick to write a script. Oh, you're sick. Here you go. You write a script and, you know, they should know better. But sometimes, let's be honest, it's the patient that really insists on the antibiotics and really pressures providers to write the script. I can't tell you how many people come into me after like one or two days of being sick and saying, just write the antibiotics. I just want to nip it in the bud. I'm just going to say this right here. It doesn't work this way. Just because you don't feel well doesn't mean you need antibiotics. When you're sick, like with a cold or URI, you probably have a virus. And remember what I said earlier, antibiotics only work on bacteria. Colds, the flu, URI, bronchitis, all caused by viruses, which cannot be wiped out by antibiotics. Bronchitis, I said earlier, sore throats are also usually viral. Even sinus infections, up until 10 days, your body will clear it. Ear infections in your children over age two will clear up. Just give it a few days. Give your child over-the-counter pain relievers for a few days. Avoid antibiotics. Antibiotics will do more harm than good, and I'll explain that in a minute. Even pink eye, when you run to the doctor or the NP or the PA and ask for drops, it's usually viral. Just give it a minute. It will go away. Here's another one. You know, sometimes you get your blood work and your urine done and it comes back with bacteria. You don't need to treat positive bacteria on a test if you don't have symptoms. If you're symptomatic, of course, but just because you have bacteria in your urine doesn't mean you have to run out and take antibiotics. So first cause of superbugs is that we're giving out antibiotics too frequently. And then, of course, as I mentioned, there are countries where people are just taking them off the counter every time they feel sick. So we're creating the superbugs. The second is that even when we get it appropriately prescribed to us, many of us are using it wrong. You must finish your course of antibiotics. Why? Because bacteria that survive an antibiotic treatment now become resistant and they can multiply and they pass on these new resistant properties that they just learned to other bacteria, which means you may have killed enough bacteria to feel good. And then you say, ah, I don't need this antibiotics anymore. But now you've left some bacteria inside of you and they just learn how to fight the next round of antibiotics. It's important to completely eradicate whatever it is that made you sick, the bacteria that made you sick. Otherwise, you're creating a super bug inside of you. So complete your course of antibiotics and don't share your extra, which you shouldn't have any. Don't share with people because one, they probably don't need it, as I explained earlier. And two, if they do really need it, and they have a bacteria, now you give them half a dose and they don't have enough to completely eradicate it and create a superbug in their body, okay? It's not good. You're thinking being kind, you're not. Don't do it. And of course, in addition to superbugs, antibiotics have side effects, including allergic reactions. You can have something called C. diff, which is possibly life-threatening diarrhea if you take too many antibiotics. Antibiotics also interfere with other medications you might be taking. Side effects of antibiotics are responsible for almost one out of every five emergency department visits. And when you take an antibiotic you don't need, you're just unnecessarily exposing yourself to all these side effects. I hope we're clear on this. So we've covered the conventional medicine side of antibiotics. Yes, they're life-saving, but they can have some serious side effects. And when we use them, we can create a superbug. 
But let's talk about the functional medicine side of why antibiotics are really not that great for you unless you really need them. Antibiotics can become very detrimental to you on a functional medicine level because they damage your microbiome. For those of you who are new, the microbiome is a world of bacteria and bugs that live inside your belly. The hundred trillion bugs that live inside you and they outnumber you 10 to 1. There is more of them than there is you inside of you. They're just smaller, so that's why we look human, but we're actually mostly bacteria. When you take an antibiotic, it wipes out the bad stuff that's causing the infection, but it also takes out the good bacteria that you need to survive. All these trillions of bacteria, they have a hundred times more genes, more DNA inside of you than your own DNA. And their DNA controls our immunity. It regulates digestion, intestinal function, protects against infections, produces vitamins and nutrients. So we don't want to eliminate them. And antibiotics, they don't know. They destroy the good and the bad, which creates a whole mess where we're called dysbiosis, where our microbiome is not balanced. Now there's the bad bugs can grow, the good bugs get eradicated, yeast can grow, fungus can grow, and that leads to mood disorders, food allergies, fatigue, skin issues, and of course, GI issues. There's more and more studies out there that show that microbes that live inside you are super critical for human health. And they are part of disease prevention, autoimmune issues, skin issues, inflammatory bowel disease, gastric ulcers, certain cancers, anxiety, depression. The list goes on and on and on. It is critical that we take care of the microbiome and the little buggers that live inside of you. Kind of gross, but that's just what it is. I cannot tell you how many people come to my office with an autoimmune issue, right? They're in their 40s, they're in their 50s, they have an autoimmune issue. And, you know, when we sit down, we get to know their entire life. They will tell me, because I'll ask them about their childhood, that they had frequent ear infections or frequent sore throats, and they just had antibiotics a lot when they were children. And they will say, you know, our parents didn't know better back then. You're right, they didn't. We just took a lot of antibiotics back then. But for those of you listening right now who are parents of little ones, now you know better. Don't run for antibiotics when your child is sick. If your pediatrician recommends a wait and see approach, don't get mad. Give him a hug. It is so much easier to just write scripts than to actually take the time to manage this appropriately. And more often than not, the antibiotics that children receive for viral infections because the parents insisted on it, like cold, sores, throats, ear infections, they probably would have gotten better on their own. All we've done is damage their delicate gut flora and that could lead to health issues when they're adults. So don't run for antibiotics when your little one is sick. This is true for over two, under two different rules, just so you know. So of course, the next question is how to fix all this. Avoid antibiotics whenever possible, obviously, but if you need it or if you already had a life of it for one reason or another, you need to focus on repairing your gut because it's going to have long-term sequelae. So first of all, you have to eat the good stuff low glycemic, whole foods diet, and you want probiotics and prebiotics. Probiotics means the good bacteria. You want a good quality multi-strain probiotic that helps repopulate your belly, your gut. And prebiotics is just a fancy word for the food for the probiotics. Okay, you have to feed your little pets inside of you. Prebiotics is the food for the probiotics. And that's onions, garlic, resistant starch, sweet potatoes, dandelion greens, Focus on gut repair, especially after you use antibiotics. You sometimes need it, you take it, you finish your course, and then you're going to want to use good gut healing nutrients like L-glutamine, omega-3 fats, vitamin A, zinc. Pair your gut lining so it can resume its normal functions. Sometimes you might even consider using digestive enzymes. For those of you out there who say, you know, I always get sick. I always get recurrent sinus infections. I always have chronic UTIs. Consider that maybe it's not just a conversation of I need more and more antibiotics but rather consider that your immune system needs help because people who have chronic inflammation are more likely to get sick. And then every time you take antibiotics, you're lowering your defense system even more, right? Because you're eradicating these good guys, making you more prone to illness and you're stuck in a vicious circle. Treat the underlying inflammation. Strengthen your immune system so that you don't get these recurrent infections. And of course, I said a lot of things. A quick recap is always necessary. Antibiotics are life-saving. We don't want to go back to our world without them, but use them only when you really need them. And when you use them, use them right. When you're on them, be extra careful with your gut, make sure to repair and replenish with the right diet and probiotics. And of course, if you're someone who's chronically ill, work on strengthening your immune system. And if all this is a lot, which it is, and you want to work with us, you just reach us at the new method on any platform, private messages anywhere, we will answer you. 
No matter what you do, I hope this helps. It helps you become the game changer in your life because you always knew there was a better way. I'll see you next week.